Today's Cardinal lesson, we're talking about tax-free retirement savings. And by tax-free, I mean tax-free. And a lot of people will miscalculate that and they'll think I'm talking about tax deferred. So there's really, there's no kind of savings that I don't like. I'm a financial planner, so any savings is good savings. But my least favorite is a taxable account. You know, and you're just, you're saying just it's money where you've already paid tax on the principal and then you get earnings or you get interest in there. And then when that happens, you have to pay taxes on it. Uh, tax deferred is my second least favorite. And what that means is you don't pay any taxes now or currently, but you're going to pay taxes on all of it or somebody's going to pay taxes. That might be your children or your heirs. And what's in tax deferred accounts are traditional 401ks, IRAs, 403bs, and it's really also um, annuities where it's deferred. So this is money that you haven't paid tax on the principal or the interest yet, but you're going to pay taxes. And then my most favorite type of savings is tax free. And that means it's never taxed, not now or in the future. The principal, you've already paid tax on the principal that's in there. And then the, so that's tax free when it's returned to you or to somebody else, to your heirs. It's the growth that we're talking about where this has the real beauty is that's tax free, not tax deferred, never taxed. So this is my most favorite kind. And a lot of people, they don't know much about it. They know of it. And a lot of folks think that they're not eligible because if you make over a certain amount, you can't put money in a Roth IRA. So people take that literally and they say, well, this all sounds wonderful, but I'm not eligible and I've not been eligible. Well, what I'm going to tell you is if you have an IRA or a 401k or other money that's in this second category, there's a way to do what's called a Roth conversion. And we're going to take some of that money, if you elect to do this, and move it from a traditional IRA into a Roth IRA. Now, we got to be careful that we don't bite off too much because you're going to have to pay tax on the whole amount of the money that you move over. And that's where a lot of people just say, wait, wait a minute. I, I don't want an increased tax bill. I hired you to lower my tax bill, not to increase it. Okay, that's one of the pain points with it. But you are eligible. If you have a big, large, traditional IRA or 401k, or it's big to you, just know that you're going to have to pay taxes on that money someday. And there is a way to get part of it or pieces of it over into a Roth, and you can enjoy the benefits of this tax-free. So I want to position this whole thing talking about the three types of money but then the video today is really about adding an additional option to the Roth IRA, another way to do tax free. And we have a lot of clients these days that are doing both. So, so why is tax free so important? I mean, why, why would it be important for a retiree or somebody in their 60s, possibly even in their 70s, some in their 50s? to pay taxes now when they could wait to pay taxes. And the answer to that is having tax-free income or the availability of tax-free income in your 70s, 80s, and 90s is wonderful if you compare it to taxable income. Because once you get on Social Security, and if there's two of you, a married couple, you're going to have two Social Security checks, and those are adding up to some pretty sizable money. And without, those are taxed. The Social Security check is taxed by the amount of your other income. And if your other income is low because it's from withdrawals from a Roth or from a life insurance fund that you've created, those don't show up. So they, they're tax-free to begin with, and then they don't drive taxes on your Social Security. 
It's the same gig with Medicare. With people that are in high incomes, you have this thing called IRMA, which is just essentially a tax for having Medicare and having a high income. And so when you get into your 70s and 80s and 90s, if you have a bunch of withdrawals that you're living off of out of this tax deferred account, or you're having to do RMDs or required minimum distributions that are taxable, and you're doing that and it's driving up your other income or your income period, your taxable income, that's going to cause a much larger tax on your Social Security is going to cause you to make IRMA payments. Now, the people who are so wealthy and have such high incomes that they don't, they're thinking, well, so we can mess around with this, but I'm still going to have a high income and I'm still going to be there. Well, those are the people that don't really have to live off of their IRA money. So they have a big amount there. And they're also the people that get annoyed by RMDs because the government at age 72 and after is going to make you start taking some of this money out. And I can help you calculate all that stuff, but there's a thing called a required minimum distribution. And they make them take out money, pay taxes on it, and it's money they don't need. So I sit down with these people. I say, what's this IRA for? What's this 401k? What? Why do you have it if you don't need to live off of it? And when I really push them on that, it's to go to their kids. I mean, that's, you know, it's going to go to their estate and, and pass on to the next generation. Or a lot of them, I don't know. They just know that they've gotten one heck of a tax break over the years. And the stock market over the last 10 or 11 years, it's a good thing, has just bloated these account values where they're up and up and up and up and somebody's going to have to pay taxes on that sooner or later and i it's my feeling that it's smart to put together a plan whether you're living off it whether you don't have to live off it or on the other side is people that wouldn't consider themselves wealthy they're going to consider themselves so many of them talk about their we're poor we're we're middle class we're we don't, you know, and they kind of live off their social security checks. They have a tendency to just let this money grow and grow and grow so that ultimately it's going to create a tax problem for somebody. So with those people as well, even if it's a small amount, it makes sense to be doing these Roth conversions. Okay. Now, if you don't know what category your money falls in, here's what I'm going to tell you. Here's your sign. If you're getting a 1099 from the bank, from Charles Schwab, from TD Ameritrade, from Merrill Lynch, or you're getting a 1099 at the end of the year, that means it's taxable. If, if that institution or that account is listed on your tax return and it has a dollar amount of income, that means you're in a taxable account. Now, that's not a good judge for the number two and number three because you don't get a 1099 out of either of these unless you make a distribution. And so it's my general feeling as I work mostly with people in their late 50s, 60s, early 70s that are retiring or have already retired and now they're sitting down and it's really hit them that they got to figure out a way to live off this money for the rest of their time or the rest of their spouse's time and then they're either concerned about their estate or not. Most people are. Um, and that's what I do is I sit down with people and try to plan this out intelligently. Um, so what I'm going to talk about now is the Roth IRA by itself, which is a wonderful alternative. In fact, if you're in poor health, this other option is not going to be available to you anyhow, or the extra charges you pay for one of these maximum funded life insurance policies is going to be high enough that it's going to kill the investment value of this thing. Um, but many people aren't, or when I have a husband and a wife, and maybe the husband is sick, but he's the one with all the IRA money, and worried about the taxes. And so he can certainly do a Roth conversion and name her as the beneficiary. But if they're interested 
and this looks attractive to them, they can put the life insurance on the wife and pay for it with withdrawals out of his account. So an IRA, either kind, Roth or traditional, has to stay in the name of the person that it originally started in for their whole lifetime. You can, you can name a spouse as a beneficiary, but you can, once the money leaves the IRA and it goes into life insurance, you, you, you can put it into anything that you want. Okay, so let's take a look at a few things here. Is in either a Roth IRA or a maximum funded life insurance, the principal, the money you're sticking in there has already been taxed. And most of the life insurance that people buy from us is the premium is 10 years and then it stops. So if, like I can think of one client that's buying one of these right now who's 64. So he's gonna pay premiums of an equal amount from 64 through 73. He's gonna pay 10 premiums into this thing. And we start with the premium, not the amount of insurance, is how much money do we wanna stuff into this life insurance policy to get all the tax advantages and borrowing advantages and estate advantages. So for him, it was about 75 grand a year. So this guy has about a $3 million IRA and that's getting him a million dollars worth of life insurance. Now, so the money that he sticks in there has already been taxed and he's paying for that out of distributions from his 401k or rolled over to an IRA with us um, over 10 years. So the principal's already been taxed. The earnings on both of these, on a Roth IRA, are tax-free. I mean, that's not tax-deferred, that's forever tax-free. Same thing with life insurance, as long as you pull them out in the right way. Uh, a death benefit, the death benefit on a Roth IRA is just the amount of the money that's in the policy or in the account, and it equals the cash value. On a life insurance overfunded plan, so if this money is really for your heirs, there's going to be a much larger payment than the cash value. Now, if the money's there at the cash value for you to spend in your 80s or 90s or partially spend, then you only have access to the cash value, not the death benefit. But the death benefit is always on life insurance going to be larger. So th these are the people that buy these kind of things when they really want to leave the money to their kids and they don't want to have a mortgage against it with a bunch of taxes due. The life insurance cost, there is no life insurance cost charged to your Roth IRA. There is with the maximum funded life insurance. But in spite of that, these things look very good and we'll be glad to show you one on you. Um, talking about redepositing withdrawals. So if you move this money slowly over into the Roth and we put together a plan, if you ever take money out of that Roth, you can't put it back in. Once it comes out, it's got to stay out. Probably be put in a taxable account. Okay. With the life insurance, you can take money out and then you can put it back without any tax effect. Or you could put part of it back and then take it out again. I actually did this on my own thing when I opened my own business many years ago. I did it and I put most of that money back. The long-term care benefit there is essentially no long-term care benefit on a Roth IRA, but your life insurance death benefit, the larger amount is accessible for long-term care. So it has, a, it has some long-term care benefits. A lot of people really like that. They're kind of getting a whole package together. There are no guarantees on the Roth IRA. I mean, when we set up the Roth IRA, it's just as risky as the traditional IRA, it's invested in stocks and bonds and mutual funds and ETFs, that sort of thing. They can go up and down and there's some insecurity there. Doesn't make it bad, it's just there's risk. With the life insurance, there's no risk. The life insurance cash value is just guaranteed and the dividends have a long history. So you, you, you're gonna get some guarantees over here. Um, is it correlated to the stock market? And obviously the Roth IRA is going to have the same correlation. And you like, you like some, some things that are uncorrelated. So if the stock market is going kind of nuts, this over here has almost no correlation to the stock market ups and downs. So it has 
that's tied in with the guarantees. Um, can a Roth IRA be removed from the taxable estate? No, because a Roth IRA has got to stay in the name of the person that originally funded it for their entire lifetime, but yet a life insurance policy can be owned and out of the taxable estate. So, you know, what I'm doing and just to kind of summarize in this video is we want to talk about the three types of money. None of them are bad. Some of them are preferable over others. I mean, you know, when you listen to this whole thing and you say, well, why would I have any money in taxable where I got to pay taxes every year? Well, it's because of the liquidity. I mean, you've got to have money that you can go get and spend. So I have a bunch of taxable money that's just in an account that I'm not earning much on just so I have the security if I need to go buy something or want to, I don't have to get a loan, I can just go get it. So this is very necessary. Um, I will tell you that many of the people that I come in to see me, uh, they're carrying way too much cash and they've got way too much liquidity. And they've done a lot of that just because of low interest rates. So we can deploy some of this money either here or here. Um, tax deferred, I mean, it's not a bad thing. This is where most people have most of their money. And most people that come in to see me, even the very well-to-do people, they've done this well and they've just got big, huge accounts and these things have gone up. And that's not a bad thing. It just creates a tax problem. You know, and I'm holding Ed Slot's book here called The New Retirement Time Savings Time Bomb. And Ed Slot in this book writes about all of his stuff. I'm one of his followers. I'm part of one of his master elite advisors, but I would suggest looking at this. If you get in touch with me, I can get you a copy of this book. Um, but he, he's describing this as a tax time bomb. If you don't have a withdrawal plan and a person just passes away, the heirs, they want the money. I mean, they just, they're, they're at midlife and they've got bills and they've got things they want to do, kids to educate. Uh, vacations to take, I don't know, loans to pay off. They don't want some future deferred tax kind of a thing. And so this can become a, a very much of a tax time bomb. And this is really needs to be created over time. This is a long term proposition. I do get some people that come into me and they're they're like, OK, boy, you sold me. I want to take all of this IRA. We actually have a guy that did this about a month ago. You know, he had a million and a half in his 401k. He didn't need any of it because he's got enough pension. I don't think he lives very highly. This is just a very common guy. And once he understood all of this, he had us calculate the taxes of just doing it all at once and did it. OK, and it was a big tax bill, but now he's got this balance and he just knows that that's tax free. But well, you know what my parallel there is, if I suggest to you or the doctor suggests to you two aspirin three times a day, he's not telling you to eat the whole bottle. OK, and that's really these are long term propositions. This is if you're in your 60s, uh, even your early 70s, we can get on a five to 10 year plan to do this, to move money from here over to here or here or both of these things with a mix. But we got to do it in pieces. The top of the, for a married couple, the top of the 24% federal tax bracket is $340,000. And for a single person, it's $170,000. So if you're a couple, and your combined income is $120,000, that means that you could convert $220,000 of your IRA and just pay 24% federal tax on that. Then we got to figure out where we're going to get that. I mean, there's don't try this at home. This is a bit complicated, but you can do that every year for a while and you'd be surprised how good that makes people feel to just build up balances over here or to be building up a life insurance policy with a big cash value that they can access at any time they want. So I'm Hans Scheil, and I thank you for listening.